Number 13 is a resolution awarding a purchase order to wife. Condition number one really speaks to the intended Forty-two cover. That's a lot. It goes nowhere in the resident, nowhere in the community. It it don't cover New Chicago. I have been on my boots. That means my feet on the ground, going from resident to resident, asking these people how they feel. I feel that the public should have more input. The transportation system is built up on citizens, taxpayers that ride the bus. Right, y'all? Right. So at this point. We're going to keep fighting, and we ask for you all to just join in with us and understand that we're crying out to this people. I wake up in the morning with this on my mind. I go to bed with this on my mind. Even sometime in the evening when I take a nap, it's on my mind. I've been riding for 27 years and I've been doing this for 15 years in other organization, but I've been in Memphis Bus Riding Union for five years. Our organization started five years ago in 2012. So this is nothing new to me. It's a passion. I'm known for the badge lady. I have my badge on with the Memphis Bus Riding Union. When I tell them what it's for, then they start going into serious issues that they want to speak about. As an organizer, as a co-chair of this organization, I have to get out there and be able to hear voices. Most of the riders that I see work at McDonald's, or uh, FedEx Forum. Uh, you just got elder people that might want to go visit family. I do outreach on the bus. I like to talk to people because I like for people input. I'm very concerned about people's feelings. What is your experience riding all these years? In the 90s, it was, I wouldn't say perfect, but it was much better than this. The bus ran early in the morning, late at night. I would catch the bus in the morning, taking my kids to daycare on the bus, going to the grocery store. It was better customer service, better routes to service on time. Do you think a lot of people in the administration might have looked down on anybody that speaks up? They give us the impression sometimes that they're not concerned about our issues. They would ask you to put it down, but they never speak and give you feedback. They don't want to fight with us. They want to be the ones that dominate and feel that they have the leadership over us and they make us feel like our voices is not important. But I think it'll be much better if MATA can get someone from their administration or their office to do that as well. To get on the buses, to do surveys, and interact with people. I don't care if it's three riders on a bus, they're still passengers. They're still supposed to run those buses in those neighborhoods. It's an excuse to take it out the African American neighborhoods. It's a human rights and it can be a civil rights issue. People are taxpayers. This is America and people have rights to get on the bus. They have rights for the bus to be running on time. As a coordinator, I feel like I can step out when it needs to be spoken on. I have no fear in me. I don't care if it's the mayor, the city council, whoever it is. If it's for human rights, I'm going to speak about it. In 2000. 12, Mata said that the budget in the city funding was low. And we found out that actually that was the second highest bus, which had 2,500 riders a day. Started in 2016, we started a campaign with the Mata Employee Union based upon bringing back the 31 Crosstown. That bus has been running since 1967. And that is a lifeline bus for everyone. You said makes people feel left out. They feel that they don't have anything coming in their neighborhoods, so they feel left out or abandoned. It should be ridership. It should be based on where people need to go and to serve people on the buses. The reason I chose transportation, because I have struggled throughout the years fighting without anybody behind me until I found some people that felt the same way I felt. So now I feel that this is a mountain that we're building. 
we have passion. We feel like that we're speaking out for human rights. And when we speak, we speak for everyone. I care about how people get where they are going and the needs of transportation in Memphis. This is our bus. This bus system is built up on the people and ridership. So this is our bus. This is our system. We refuse to let them do what they want to do and we taxpayer and these people pay their fare. Oh no, we're going to keep fighting. And this fight is going to be a fight until we receive justice and victory. If you could just imagine anything, just to, to have it go back to where it was, just, just as simple as that. It would be breathtaking for me. I just pray to God that this bus go back because not only me, when I'm talking, I'm talking for we, us.